there is something inherently heartwarming about the bond between animals of different species, particularly when such relationships seem to transcend nature's laws. This was the case with a massive Belgian shepherd named Ingo, who had formed an extraordinary friendship with a small, rescued owl. One day, this unique relationship led to an astonishing event. Ingo, with a deep and resonant howl that pierced the tranquil forest air, managed to draw the attention of his human family. Emerging from the thick woods with a bundle of feathers delicately gripped in his mouth, he made his way towards the family's sprawling forest-side cabin. The family members, upon hearing Ingo's howl, were quick to rush outside, their hearts pounding with anxiety at the unexpected sight. As Ingo gently placed the seemingly lifeless owl at their feet, the family was initially struck with horror. They feared the worst for the tiny owl, who had become a beloved part of their lives. Lying motionless on the ground, the owl's fate seemed grim, and it was hard for the family to imagine that Ingo, their gentle giant, could have caused her harm. They were reluctant to examine the scene more closely, dreading what they might find. At the inception of Ingo and the owl's friendship, the family would never have imagined such a heartbreaking scenario. Ingo, known for his mild and affectionate nature, had always shown a special fondness for his feathered friend, it seemed. Momentarily, that his primal instincts might have led to a tragic outcome, Ingo was not your typical Belgian shepherd. Despite his imposing stature and formidable appearance, he was exceptionally tender-hearted. Born into a lineage of service dogs, Ingo was initially trained to serve as a police dog, a role he never assumed. His intelligence was apparent. He could master complex agility courses and even perform tasks such as opening doors, however. His lack of aggression made him unsuitable for confrontational tasks during training. Instead of attacking, he would gently latch onto the bad guys during simulations, a tactic that would be ineffective in real-life law enforcement scenarios and could endanger him. Efforts to train him to pursue suspects with more vigor proved unsuccessful. Ingo simply did not have an aggressive bone in his body, although he became more protective of his family. He did not meet the stringent requirements of police work and was subsequently put up for adoption. This led him to Tanya Brand's family. Tanya, a wildlife photographer with a deep affection for animals, found Ingo to be an understanding and empathetic companion. His training made him an outstanding family pet. In the forest, where Tanya often ventured for her photography, Ingo would exhibit impeccable behavior, obediently sitting and staying when asked, and always vigilant in his gentle way. As the family cautiously approached the owl, preparing for the worst, they noticed a slight movement. To their immense relief and joy, the owl was alive. It turned out that Ingo had discovered her injured in the forest and, recognizing his friend in distress, had carefully carried her back to the cabin for help. This act of kindness reaffirmed the special bond between Ingo and the owl, showcasing the depth of his gentle nature and the extraordinary friendship that defied all odds. Residing in a rustic cabin surrounded by lush forest on expansive, fenced grounds, Tanya and her vivacious dog, Ingo, enjoyed a life full of adventure and tranquility. The sprawling area allowed Ingo plenty of space to unleash his seemingly endless energy, making him an excellent companion for Tanya, especially during her photographic excursions in the wilderness. Despite his vibrant and spirited nature, Ingo exhibited remarkable self-control during Tanya's photo shoots. He would sit silently beside her as she captured stunning images of the local wildlife, even showing incredible restraint when squirrels brazenly ate from his food bowl without him making any fuss. Ingo usually demonstrated a serene demeanor, even when they encountered various wildlife on their frequent explorations. However, an unusual incident occurred one day while they were venturing deeper into the forest. They came across several owl nests. A particular interest of Tanya's due to her fondness for these majestic birds, she was excited to discover that some nests contained eggs, anticipating the moment she could use her telephoto lens for intimate portraits of the hatchlings once they emerged. Tanya and Ingo made it a routine to visit these nests daily, maintaining a safe distance so as not to disturb the nesting owls. When the eggs finally hatched, Tanya captured the fledgling owlets on her camera, thrilled at the opportunity. However, during one visit, Ingo's behavior took a sudden turn. Instead of his usual composed self, he became visibly distressed and began sniffing and whining near the bushes under one of the nests. Tanya, concerned that Ingo might upset the owls, attempted to soothe him, but he ignored her commands for the first time. Focused on something in the bushes, Ingo's persistent behavior prompted Tanya to investigate further, to her astonishment. She found an owl egg that had seemingly been accidentally ejected from the nest above. 
torn between intervening and the risk of causing the adult owls to abandon the nest, Tanya felt a deep sense of responsibility to at least try to help the fallen egg, unsure of its viability but unwilling to leave it. She felt compelled to act, with Ingo by her side, fully engaged in the unfolding drama, back at home. Tanya and Ingo set about constructing a makeshift incubator from light bulbs and a small glass box. Though they kept their expectations in check, Ingo, however, seemed unusually optimistic, vigilantly sitting next to the incubator, watching over the egg as if he sensed the life within. His unusual level of interest and concern was a poignant reminder of the deep bond they shared and their shared commitment to making a difference, however small, in the natural world they both cherished. A few nights after finding the mysterious egg, the sleep of Tanya and her family was shattered by the excited, sharp barks of Ingo, their large and usually calm dog. To their amazement, the reason for Ingo's excitement quickly became apparent. The egg was beginning to hatch. They watched in awe as a tiny chick slowly broke free from its shell. They decided to name the newborn owl Poi and silently prayed for her survival, in anticipation of this moment. The family had done their research on how to properly care for an owl. They were grateful for this preparedness as they began to feed and nurture Poi, with Ingo never far away. As Poi grew from a fluffy chick into a feathered young owl, a deep and touching friendship blossomed between her and Ingo. Poi seemed to find great comfort and joy in Ingo's presence, often running up to him to jump and nap on his head, although she was not yet able to fly. She followed him wherever he went, showing a preference for his company over that of her human family members. This unique bond was unlike anything Tanya and her family had ever witnessed. It appeared that Poi truly viewed Ingo as her parent, and in turn, Ingo seemed to have wholeheartedly adopted Poi. Tanya captured countless photos of their interactions, which were nothing short of enchanting. As Poi learned to fly, her first instinct was to soar directly to Ingo. The family tried to teach her essential survival skills, such as hunting, by hiding food for her to find in their yard. Poi began to venture further afield but always returned. Impressively, one day she came back with a mouse, which she proudly ate while perched on Ingo's back, signaling her growing independence. Eventually, the family knew it was time to consider releasing Poi into the wild, believing that she deserved to live freely in her natural habitat, with heavy hearts. They drove a long distance from their cabin and released Poi into a dense section of the forest. Ingo, displaying a rare show of emotion, sulked all the way home. The family returned home feeling melancholic, missing the presence of the little owl. However, their sadness was short-lived. As soon as they opened the door, an owl swooped down and landed squarely on Ingo. It was Poi, who had managed to return even before them. It became clear that Poi had no intention of leaving her family or the life she cherished with them and Ingo, realizing Poi's deep attachment and her need for freedom, the family decided to build several owl boxes around their property, this solution allowed Poi to continue living with them while also enjoying the freedom she clearly desired, Poi eagerly moved into one of the new owl boxes, settling into a life that balanced her independence with her unusual, heartwarming bond with Ingo. In their spacious backyard, Poi the owl rarely ventured far from home, often found contentedly dozing on Ingo, the family dog. They enjoyed frolicking together across the expanse of their property, which only accentuated the mystery when Poi went missing for several days. Her sudden absence was unusual, and Ingo seemed visibly distressed, missing the constant presence of his feathery friend. One day, with a sudden burst of urgency, Ingo dashed into the dense woods that bordered their property. Fortunately, the yard was securely fenced, allowing him the freedom to explore without concern. From the forest, his loud howls and mournful cries echoed, alarming Tanya and her family, who were prompted to investigate, fearing Ingo was in trouble. When the family approached, they saw Ingo emerge from the trees, not alone, but carrying a bundle of feathers in his mouth, dropping the feathery clump at their feet. The family was shocked to find Poi, motionless and seemingly lifeless. The initial shock that Ingo might have hurt Poi was quickly dispelled when he tenderly licked her, and she showed signs of life. The family's fear turned to relief as they carefully examined her and found no bite marks or puncture wounds. Despite her severe injuries, it was evident that Ingo had not harmed her but had instead rescued her when she was too weak to return home on her own. He had gently carried her back, ensuring not to hurt her. Ingo had a long-standing bond with Poi. Having discovered her as just an egg and becoming her devoted protector ever since, now, he had heroically saved her once again. The family was anxious but hopeful that it wasn't too late to help her recover. Poi was in a dire state, 
she was weak, her wing was broken, and she appeared ill, determined to nurse her back to health, they set her wing and attempted to feed her, although she showed little interest in food. The veterinary team provided various tonics and an antibiotic specifically formulated for birds, which they administered carefully, to prevent further injury, they placed Poi in a small cage to restrict her movements while she recuperated, as she settled into her temporary home, Ingo sat beside the cage, watching over her with unwavering loyalty, hoping for her swift recovery, Ingo, the gentle Belgian shepherd, positioned his head close to the small. Frail owl named Poi who was struggling with her health, the owl was in a precarious state, susceptible to fading away, but Ingo's comforting presence seemed to impart strength and solace, he tenderly licked her and eventually settled down beside her, his warmth bridging the cold metallic divide of the cage grate, by the next morning, there was a noticeable shift in Poi's condition, her eyes fluttered open and she made soft sounds, signaling her hunger, a positive sign that brought smiles to the faces of her caregivers. They observed her eagerly consuming food, a vital step in her recuperation. Her caregivers allowed her to wander around the house freely, ensuring she had sufficient time to rest and regain her strength. Initially gravely ill, Poi's recovery was nothing short of astonishing. She began to exercise her wings and even attempted flight, once her bandages were removed. She was able to fly proficiently and was soon ready to be released back into the wild. Upon her release, Poi returned to the outdoor boxes provided by her human rescuers but showed an increased attachment compared to before. Her previous injury, though its exact cause remained unknown, seemed to have instilled a sense of wariness about the wilderness. Despite this, she remained confident and secure in her human protected home, bonding even more deeply with Ingo. The relationship between the dog and the owl, forged in the crucible of her recovery, was about to enter an even more heartwarming phase. Together, Ingo and Poi had shared numerous challenges, but what unfolded next was unexpectedly touching. Poi grew to love the owl boxes scattered around the property, feeling safe and yet free within them. This sense of security emboldened her to start her own family. The family was amazed to find eggs in Poi's nest. A poignant reflection of how her journey with them had commenced, from a small egg to a nurturing mother, it was a marvelous sight to behold the cycle of life continuing with Poi, if not for Ingo's empathetic intervention, Poi, and potentially her future offspring, might have perished, along with all her subsequent generations, thanks to Ingo's care, they would all flourish, with hearts full of empathy, the family eagerly watched the process of the eggs hatching, a thrilling experience. As the young owls took their first flights, their initial destination was back to the safety of their home, a testament to the lasting impact of the bond formed between species. That morning, when she stepped outside, she discovered Ingo surrounded by a group of owls. The young owlets even began to follow their mother to Ingo, cuddling up to him affectionately. From then onwards, Poi and all her descendants made the family's property their permanent home. The family installed several additional owl boxes to accommodate the growing number of nests. Although most of these owls would eventually spread their wings and leave, they retained a deep trust in the family. As Poi grew older on the property, her bond with Ingo remained special, though she was never as tame as in her younger days. Even after Poi's passing, Ingo's connection with the owls did not fade. Among Poi's grandchildren, there was a frail little owl named Bleach who struggled with flying. After being pushed out of the nest by her mother, Tanya noticed the struggling owlet. With Ingo's help, they took care of Bleach just as they had with her grandmother, Poi. Unfortunately, Bleach was never strong enough to be released back into the wild, but she found a loving home with Tanya, Ingo, and the rest of the family. They built a new owl box accessible to her, and she lived as freely as she could within those confines, even finding a mate, the pair laid eggs, though the initial attempts were unsuccessful as none hatched. Over time, Bleach laid a total of 17 eggs and it was only in her last clutch that one egg hatched successfully, she finally had a chick to raise, which grew healthy and eventually ventured off into the forest to live independently. Ingo's affection for Bleach mirrored his love for Poi, ensuring that the family would always provide love and protection for these extraordinary birds. After listening to this tale, what are your impressions? We'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. Your insights are valuable to us. Now, we have another engaging story, let's proceed to the next one. The nursery rhyme The Owl and the Pussycat has long captured our imaginations, but the idea of a real-life friendship between these two creatures seems almost too whimsical to believe. Surprisingly, this is precisely what unfolded in Spain, 
where an extraordinary relationship between a cat and an owl not only developed but also captured the hearts of many online. This remarkable bond, however, was later marked by a tragic event. In the scenic landscapes of Spain, Jordi Aminos, a falconer with years of experience, has devoted his life to mastering the art of falconry with various birds of prey. Jordi finds a unique beauty in the silent, deadly grace of these birds and takes great pride in watching them execute their natural behaviors daily. However, in 2010, Jordi's routine was pleasantly disrupted by an unexpected addition to his menagerie, aside from his majestic birds. Jordi also cared for a striking black cat named Foon, a Catalan word meaning smoke. Newly introduced into Jordi's life as a kitten, Foon quickly carved out a special place in his heart, comparable to the affection he held for his birds. This affection was likely kindled by Foon's own predatory instincts, which saw him hunting everything from pigeons and small rodents to even the tiniest of insects, demonstrating his prowess around the clock. What made Foon particularly endearing to Jordi and others on the farm was his friendly disposition towards all humans and animals alike. Foon also had a distinctive habit of rubbing himself against the thyme plants in the garden, which gave him a peculiar scent. However, the most extraordinary aspect of Foon wasn't his aromatic adventures. It was his unusual friendship with a new bird of prey that Jordi had recently acquired. This bird was a Tito Alba owl named Jabra. Translating to Frost in English, Jabra was born in Andalusia and was trained using traditional falconry techniques, a practice steeped in the history of both Europe and Asia. Although nocturnal birds like Jabra are not typically ideal for hunting due to their nighttime activities, their silent, elegant flight has increasingly attracted falconers. These birds are particularly active during the early morning and late evening, making them effective hunters at catching smaller, active prey during these times. Jabra, adopted by Jordi when she was just a fledgling, was hand-raised from infancy to adulthood by Jordi himself. The unlikely friendship between Foon, the black cat with a penchant for hunting, and Jabra, the graceful owl trained in the art of falconry, was nothing short of astonishing to those who witnessed it. Their bond defied conventional wisdom about the natural instincts of predators and prey, illustrating a serene coexistence that resonated with many across the globe. Jabra's upbringing facilitated a degree of domestication, though her instincts remained predominantly those of a wild bird of prey. Whenever she sensed interest from strangers, she would instinctively take to the skies, returning to Jordi only after the perceived threat had dissipated. During the falconry season, which extended from September to June, Jabra relished her daily solo flights. Embracing her independence and honing her hunting skills as she matured, each year, for several weeks, Jordi would ensure Jabra stayed within her designated enclosure at the falconry center. This confinement was a necessary precaution during her molting period, a common practice among falconers to safeguard their birds from predators while their new plumage developed. Despite this isolation, Jabra was never lonely, thanks to her closest companion, Foon. A cat she had befriended when they were both just a month old, their friendship blossomed quickly and deeply, having met when Jordi introduced Jabra to the outdoors to improve her flying and hunting prowess, essential skills for any bird of prey. During one of these training sessions, as Jabra swooped towards Jordi's gloved hand, she was suddenly ambushed by a dark figure, it was Foon, making a playful leap at her, Jordi initially tensed. Fearing for the cat's safety given Jabra's powerful predatory nature, however, his concern quickly subsided as it became clear that the two had forged an unexpectedly strong bond from their very first interaction, a development that Jordi hadn't foreseen. Foon soon became a regular participant in Jabra's daily outings, engaging in playful pursuits, darting and leaping through the air in a spirited mock chase that both creatures enjoyed immensely, besides their aerial antics. Foon also took pleasure in practicing his stalking skills on Jabra whenever she landed, he would crouch and camouflage himself, then suddenly spring towards the owl, occasionally even somersaulting over her in a display of agility and playfulness. After their playful escapades, Foon would invariably snuggle up to Jabra, a gesture of companionship that further cemented their strong and unusual friendship. This bond not only enriched their lives but also added a unique dynamic to their interactions showcasing the profound connection that can develop between different species under the right circumstances. Jordi meticulously observed the interactions between his two beloved pets, marveling at the unique bond they had formed independently of any outside influence, including his own. Their spontaneous camaraderie was so captivating that when Jordi shared a video of their playful antics online, 
it quickly garnered the attention of thousands, becoming a viral sensation. In an interview, Jordy reflected on their mutual understanding and empathy, musing that if animals could achieve such harmony, surely humans could learn to do the same. Tragically, their story took a heartbreaking turn. Foon, the feline, was diagnosed with feline neurologic syndrome, FUS, a severe urinary condition, despite receiving the best medical care possible. Foon was unable to overcome the illness and passed away due to renal obstruction caused by the syndrome. Jordy shared this sad news on Facebook on May 4, emotively conveying his grief and the profound loss felt by all who had come to love the duo online. Throughout his life, Foon cherished his friendship with Jabra, the owl. Jordy stressed that their relationship was a powerful demonstration of unspoken love and companionship. He often spoke of it as one of the richest legacies they could leave behind. Addressing concerns from some followers, Jordy reassured them that despite their differences in species, Foon had always been gentle with Jabra, showcasing his affection and gentle nature. In remembrance of Foon, Jordy decided to bury him in the serene woods where he and Jabra had shared countless joyful moments. Both Jordy and Jabra deeply felt the loss, marking the end of a beautiful chapter in their lives. However, the memories of Foon would forever remain in their hearts, a lasting tribute to their incredible bond. Jordy's story touches on themes of friendship, loss, and the universal capacity for love, transcending the barriers between species. Do you have any thoughts after hearing the above two stories? We'd like to hear your thoughts. Tell us in the comments section. That's all for today's story. Please subscribe and give a thumbs up. See you next time.